Yes. Hello, darling. I'm later than I thought I'd be. Have you missed me? Hey, have I? You know, I love to open that door and see you here like this. It makes me wonder what the devil I'd do if you stopped coming around. What would you do? Yeah, I want to talk to you about that. Hey, you seem so serious. You really want to talk? I want to marry you. Why? Why? Well, why do you think why? I'm off my nut about you. You know I am. Well, why make so much fuss about it? You know, there's something about you. I mean, there's some part of you that's taking it on the run for me all the time. Don't be silly. I take it on the run right into your arms, don't I? Yeah, just the same as your father does for booze. Ace, you're the one person in the world who shouldn't speak unkindly of my father. None of your friends know anything about me, do they? You don't tell anybody anything, do you? No, of course not. It's my own business. Now, you're not shooting over my head, Jen. I got you figured pretty well. We're never seen together anyplace. But from now on, it's going to be different. You're crazy about me, and you've got to go all the way through. Why can't you marry me? Oh, Ace, darling, I'm head over heels mad about you. You know I am. What's in the future, I don't know. I'm telling you. No, you're not. Nobody is. Marrying you is serious, very serious. It's the end of a lot of things for me. My world would close up on me in a minute. Why worry about them, a lot of high-hat chiselers? Oh, wait. Hey, cut that, Jan. Get me cut it. It's not a laughing matter. Put your arms around me. Oh. That's better. Oh, maybe you're my sweetheart from the other end of the world, and maybe you're rank poison. Tomorrow we'll look into a crystal ball for what's ahead, hmm? All right, all right. And who's doing the talking now? <laughs> That night, Ace Wilfong's place is raided. As the police arrive, Ace's henchmen, knowing the boss wouldn't want Stephen Ash's name mixed up in any scandal, break open the private door of Ace's apartment and push Ash into the room. He sees Jan and is instantly shocked into sobriety. He takes his daughter home without a word, but as soon as they reach their hotel room, a violent argument begins. Ace Will Fong isn't good enough, Jan, even if you think you're in love with him. Dad, yesterday you won your first case in five months. There's only one reason why you lost the others. Now, I haven't, criti- now, I haven't criticized a priest, and I haven't let anybody else do it. Oh, that's not fair, Jan. You know it isn't. I've lived most of my life in great anxiety, terrific strain and excitement. I have to drink as I have to breathe. You know I do. I think my reasons are better than yours. Ace Wilfong is the only man in the world I care anything about. Oh, Jan, darling, this isn't love. Believe me, I've seen a lot. I know it isn't. Why, have you ever married him in six months? I never thought of marrying him until now. Oh, Jan, my baby. Now, oh, I'm afraid things have caught up with us. I've done you great, awful harm. But when I think of you in this... this mongrel... Please, Dad. Well, I'm sorry, but when I think of it, it was it just complete eclipse. There's nothing left, that's all. Nothing. Uh, that's how much I love you, and, and that's what I've done to you. God help me. Dad, I have a suggestion. Because I really love you better than anything else on earth. Another year like the last for you was just the end of everything. I didn't realize it till this minute. Well, Jan? I'll make a bargain with you. Uh, I can't go on and have you blame yourself like this, and I can't see you lose what a brilliant life has piled up. A bargain, you say? If you'll quit drinking, I won't see Ace anymore. Oh, no, you you should do it without any bargain. Well, I wouldn't think of it, Dad. Well, I'm afraid I couldn't promise I'm giving that... up what's in my blood just as much, every bit. Well, I'll try, Jan. I'll... We'll bury ourselves for six months in the hills, and it has to begin right now. <sighs> if you'll never take another drink, I'll never see Ace again. Never. All right, baby. I'll try. All right, Jan. All right, dear. So Jan and her father go away to the hills, and his regeneration starts. But the habit of years is too much for him. And though he fights it, he gradually gives way to temptation. One day, Jan discovers him drinking. Ash, horrified and with shame and remorse, runs away, takes a train back to the city, where he really starts to drink himself into a stupor. He's in bad shape when Ace Wilfong happens to walk into the cheap saloon. 
Ash. Ash. Ah, uh, what do you want? Get away from me. Bartender. Yeah? How long has this man been here? Uh, two days. He slept here last night. He's in pretty bad shape. Bring me some ice right away. Then call the doctor at the clinic and tell him that Ace Wilfong wants him over here right away. Ace Wilfong. You heard me now. Hurry. How is he, Doctor? He'll be all right, I think. Just about got him in time. Good. Uh, Send the bill to me. Whatever you say. Is this where he lives? Yes. Uh, Will he sleep now? I think so. But he might wake up and want to talk. Somebody ought to be with him. I'll stick till somebody shows up. So long, Doctor. Goodbye. Give me a drink. No, not for a while yet. How do you feel? Oh, terrible. Did, did you bring me here? Yeah. Where's Jan? How should I know? I haven't seen her in three months, thanks to you. Oh, I can't face her. I made a bargain with bargain. her. Bargain? Yes. I, I promised to stay off the booze. Oh, I get it. And you made her promise not to see me. Was that the deal? Oh, she'll be looking for me. She'll loathe the sight of me. You'll be all right. But if she's coming here, I better breathe. No, 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 no. Don't go. I've got to talk to you. I've got to convince you. Now, if it's about Jan, it's no dice. I've thought about her every hour since she was gone. She's the only thing in the world that means two cents to me. Now, you've got to listen to me. If you really love her as much as you say, you'll want to do the thing that will make her happy. All right. All right. Go ahead and talk. Uh, I'm listening. From the depths of his heart, Stephen Ash makes a plea for his daughter's happiness, more dramatic than any speech he's ever made to a hostile jury. And finally, he persuades Ace, through his very love for Jan, that he must deliberately kill her love. Ash, satisfied, falls asleep. But Ace, stealing himself for the sacrifice he must make, waits for Jan to arrive. Ace, what are you doing here? I brought your father home. Oh, where is he? In there, asleep. He's been drinking. Is he all right? He will be. Oh, Ace. It's so wonderful to see you again. Well, aren't you glad to see me at all? Well, why should I be? You ran out on me, didn't you? I've come back. Well, with me, they don't come back. You're still angry with me, aren't you? No. Nope. Yes, you are, and I can't blame you. I shouldn't have run away. Forgive me, Ace. All right, all right. Take your hands off. Kiss me. Say, what's the matter with you? Are you dumb? The guy gets tired of a dame, there's nothing you can do. We're through, you understand? We had our fun, and that's all there is to it. Is that all there ever was to it? Certainly. You thought I loved you, didn't you? Well, I didn't, and I don't. Then why did you wait for me? So I could tell you. So you could get it straight, you understand? Hmm. You're not a very good liar, Ace. What makes you think I'm lying? Because I know you love me just as I love you. You keep away from me. Darling. Darling. Jen. Well... Out of the way, Jen. So this is how you keep your word, is it, you swine? Hey! Oh. Why did you do it, Lord? He promised me he'd... Shut up. He's still alive. Yeah. Your mongrels are hard to kill. Please, darling. You tried to make me hate you, didn't you? But you couldn't. Jen! Jan, call a doctor. Oh, never mind the doctor. I got a slug in the belly. No chance. <laughs> don't worry. Get her this way. Ace. Ace, don't die. Counselor. Counselor. How are you going to beat this rat? I wouldn't want to beat it if I could. Get a hold of a slouch. He'll show you how to make it a, a suicide. Goodbye, Jen. <laughs> so long, Counselor. And don't leave your hat here. It might fit you. Congratulations, Miss Johnson, Mr. Barrymore, and Mr. Gable. 
The MGM Theater of the Air will have to go some to top those performances. 